Welcome back, folks. We have a very special video today. I'm going to be interviewing Chris Hopkins, the artist behind the cover art for Dragon Warrior 3 and Dragon Warrior 4 on the NES. Chris is a very talented and experienced artist who has been doing this kind of work for a long time. He has done paintings that have shown up in different museum galleries. He's done Super Bowl advertisements, movie posters, and even album covers. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hello? Uh, hello. Hey, hello. Uh, hi, Chris. This is... Hey, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. So you're losing stuff, huh? Uh, yeah. I'm, uh, off school now. Well, how old are you now? I'm, uh, 23 years old. Oh, you can't be losing stuff yet. That's, that's my world. I'm old. You're young. What is this? You, you know, your mind is sharp and everything. Losing is my category. <laughs> well, uh... Yeah, I've had a bit of a rough semester, so it's kind of uh, nice to relax a little bit, I think. Oh, well, act your age, would you? Act like a young person, and your mind is too sharp to be like mine, so... Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'm, i got to tease with you a little bit here. got to start the day with that way. Anyway, what can I do for you, buddy? Uh, I just want to go over the same kind of stuff again. Uh, I look more into your work, and I'm uh, very interested, actually, in a lot of the stuff you've done. Mm, okay. So, um... Uh, I'll just ask you some stuff about uh, how you started. Uh, how, how did you get into art again? Well, I started, well, if you go back to the beginning when I was in kindergarten, I drew a, a parrot that got a lot of attention. And I realized that I liked that. And I had an older brother who uh, was athletically gifted, and, and it was the type of thing where he got all the attention for his athletic prowess. You know, great guy. Love my brother. And then it took me a few years to, you know, get into that sports myself. But I just thought it, it was something that people responded to, gave me the attention that I wanted as a little kid. And I figured, well, I kind of like this. And I kept doing it from then. I, I had my own little business in elementary school selling pictures of monsters for like a dime a piece and things like that. And, um, and then I would just fiddly futz around as the years went on uh, doing little art jobs for maybe 20 bucks or so. Then I went to the Art Center College of Design and and uh, got out and went from there, I guess. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I can relate a little bit like... Uh... In regards to wanting uh, something to set yourself apart a little bit more, I think so. And I, it, 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 you know, came to a crossroads. And I was in college. I went to college on an athletic scholarship for wrestling, and I wrestled. I did that for uh, a couple of years, and then it just really uh, dawned on me, well, pretty hard actually, that I didn't. I had the future that I wanted was not as a wrestler. I mean, uh, the only future I had would to be a coach or something, and I did not want to do that. I wanted to be an artist full-time. That's when I, I gave up my scholarship and dropped out and lived out of my car for a couple of years and stuff, traveled around and did all that, odd jobs, and, you know, mostly being a, a, an ex-collegiate wrestler, I'd get a job, like, at a, at a bar as a bouncer at a college bar in a different town or, you know, in, in Idaho and stuff like that. And which I was a terrible bouncer because my idea of crowd control was cream pies and seltzer bottles, you know. So, <laughs> you know, that's wasn't, wasn't wasn't very good at. It. I didn't like to hit anybody, and I did not want to get hit. So there you go. Well, I'll, I'll be a pretty bad bouncer too if I ever did that job. Oh God, I was I was horrible. <laughs> God, I I do the Jedi mind trick on them. You know, they'd come in and be raising hell. And, hey, you what guys want to go raise hell at the pub down the street? You know, like, come on, boys, let's go down the street and raise some hell. You know, stuff like that. So, you know, that was that was just as good as any. You know, they're pretty toasted when they come in there anyway. So, I see. So a lot of odd jobs over the years, and then while trying to. Support yeah, yourself. a lot of physical jobs when I was younger, um, you know, before I went into art school. And actually, once I got out of Art Center, I had to do concrete, too, for the first six months because I couldn't get any work anywhere. I'd been working while I was a student for, you know, a couple magazines and whatnot. And then when I got out, I couldn't get anything. And so I had to resort to concrete work until things picked up. Got hired by Willardson and White and uh, never looked back. So do you still work there at the Willardson and White? Oh, God, no. They've been dissolved for years. They they were, Charles White and David Willerson started that company, and they had 
two of us working there full time. Then they had a couple of people come in from time to time. But Mick McGinty and myself did the bulk of of the work there. But uh, I left in like 1983, something like that. Um, and then the company, I think, went went out of business like within a year after that. Not that I had anything to do with it, but I mean, it's just the way the timing went. Is that's how it went? They everyone moved on to their different uh, different directions. Okay, uh, what kind of work did you do at that company? Uh, uh, illustration. I was an illustrator. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, where did you go to art school again? Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, California. Oh, that's cool. Did you uh, enjoy your time there? No, I oh. hated it. I was broke. I was poor. I mean, I I got a really good education. Um, but I had no money at all. You know, it was one of those things to where I was just trying to hang in there, and as hard as I would try, I could never get a scholarship. And even though I graduated with honors, you know, I, I just could not get a scholarship. And it was really, you know, it was one of those distressing times where, you know, um, my father had terminal cancer, and he was he was dying. And I and I I wanted to get out. I wanted to go back to Oregon to see my father. And my mom and dad were very adamant, you know, because I was going to drop out of school and whatnot. They said, no, 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 this is one of our big dreams that you, you know, finish college, get your education, this and that. So I stuck it out, and my dad stuck it out long enough to come to my graduation, and he was very, very pleased and everything to see, you know, you know, see me graduate. Because um, no one in the family had ever graduated from any college. Um, but no, I, I didn't like it there. I, I mean, the education was great, but, you know, like I said, I was hungry all the time. I was dead broke, um, and my father was dying. So I, you know, I wanted to get the hell out, <laughs> but I didn't. So the long answer to a very short question. I mean, had I just said no, that would have been would have sounded real cheeky of me. So anyway, I see. It's 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 a uh, good that you stuck it out. I suppose it helped in the long oh, yeah. run. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was good. I mean, it, it, I learned everything I, I really needed to, to learn there about all the fundamentals and the you know and and techniques i i had some uh wonderful teachers that i never would have gotten anywhere else so before your um your current project started you did a lot of interesting things you uh did movie posters you did some super bowl advertisements i believe is that true yeah i did theme art for three super bowls uh so that would be like the the um the program that everyone gets right it's the poster, the program. It's a theme art. That means it's well. It's it's the art they use for everything. Yeah, the the tickets, posters, programs, uh, backdrops. Uh, they use a lot of times in videos and things like that. So that's uh, that's pretty incredible, actually. So you probably saw your artwork everywhere during the Super Bowl period at the time, right? Well, I still do during the Super Bowl because they'll still pull those things out and and put them up there, even though they're they were done so many years ago. They'll pull them out for other things, and they'll even have what was it—the best uh, Super Bowl designs of all time, or something. They they had one of those things out last year and put them up, and and it it shows up a lot still. So wow. So uh, what what years were the Super Bowl um, that you? Designed? I don't remember the years. I can tell you the numbers. There's Super Bowl like there was somewhere like eighty. Oh gosh, I think like eighty five, eighty six, and eighty eight. I did Super Bowl twenty, twenty one, and twenty three. Okay. That's pretty cool. I, I did take a look at them. They're pretty nice looking, actually. Uh, oh, good. A long yeah. time ago. Yeah, they still sell them, and they're uh, on the NFL store, actually, your designs. Oh, do they? Okay. Yeah. yeah I guess from that top 25 or whatever it was, uh, two of them were, two of my three were in there, so that was that was nice. That's cool. Yeah, that's good. You also did album covers, apparently? Yes, yes. Uh, what bands? Uh... God, these are a long time ago. So I did Oingo Boingo. I did uh, Sticks Paradise Theater. I did um, I did some Christian uh, bands when Zion Petra. Um, oh God, I did some RAF was a different band for, from A and M. Uh, sea Wind you know, with Pauline Wilson. Um, God, I did quite a few. I just don't remember all of them really. Um, I did one. Oh God, the guy who was in Super Tramp. I can't remember. Anyway, but I, I, those are the ones that come to mind right now. The Sticks Paradise Theater. I was I was a finalist for a Grammy on that for album package design. So 
So you were nominated for a Grammy before? Yeah, yeah, I was a finalist for that album package design for for Sticks Paradise Theater. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I did some for what was it? Um, it was a movie, uh, White Nights. That was they used that for the movie. They did it for the soundtrack as well. So, are there any other movie posters uh, that come to mind that you've done in the past? Yeah, um, I mean, I worked on on loads of them, but the ones that actually went to the end were like like Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, and um, oh God, <laughs> I'd have to think. Ruskies was another one. Uh, and all the ones I worked on, I worked on the original Return of the Jedi, and, and uh, oh God, I mean, there's just there's just so many. I, I'm a Little Shop of Horrors, uh, did that matinee, a Christmas Story. Lord, there's just there's just so many that I did. Just I just forgot you know, all of them. That, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't remember. There's so many. I mean, I could look them up and try to find some things on it, but but it was. Um, it was a long time ago. So. Okay, so uh, how many paintings do you think you've done like over the years? Just thousands. Thousands. Yeah, I mean, there's no. I mean, I've been at this for, God, how many years since 1979? Or you know, I mean, I was illustrating when I was 78. So, well, not when I was. I'm not 78, but in 1978. Um, and I've just and I paint and draw every day, you know. So I, I really, it would literally be. I mean, I, I if you count all the finished drawings, it would have to be thousands. Yeah, I just can't, I can't even imagine where all of this stuff goes. I mean, you could safely say hundreds, but it's, that would be inaccurate, you know. But I say thousands, people think, ah, oh, he's, you know, he, what he's been drinking his bath water or something. No, it's <laughs> just, I think it's really true, though. I think it, if I went through everything, I would see that it would be. I mean, it's, it's a lot. I mean, I've got sketchbooks here that are full of what, like, what I consider finished sketches and things like that. It's just, it's ridiculous. So, yeah, just put a lot, <laughs> you know, just be on the stage, just say a lot. So that, that a, every day you paint in there and draw? Yeah, every day. Wow. I'm pretty obsessed with it, you know. That's great. So you you have a studio also that you go to to do this specifically? Yeah, I just have a detached garage that I had converted into a studio years ago. That's pretty. And that's that's where I'm at right now. That's not bad. So yeah, works out okay. I was looking at um, some of your exhibits. Uh, I noticed mm -hmm. that you have a lot of um, exhibits focusing on parts of history. This is uh, something you're interested in now compared to. Yeah. Yeah, and compared to what I'm sorry, I didn't hear the last year. I didn't say anything. Oh, I thought you said I'm interested in compared to some. Of the, yeah, I am interested in history. I think it's amazing. Um, I think we can learn a lot from that. When I like, say, for instance, when I started on the um, things I was really passionate about, like the Tuskegee Airmen, it wasn't as big or as well known as it has become. Again, that has nothing to do with me. It was just the timing just happened to be the right time. And I started working on these things for a few years, and then I know George Lucas put out another movie, or well, he put out the only one we never did, but the second movie I saw on the Tuskegee Airmen. Um, and that, you know, gained a lot of attention for the Tuskegee Airmen. I mean, the internment that was, when I worked on it, wasn't as known as it is now. Again, I'm not being any delusions of grandeur here, like I had anything to do with it. It was just timing again. And, um, and that has to do with my, you know, my wife is Japanese-American and, and uh, her family. And it had to do, you know, a lot with that. But I, I am... You know, I think we can learn a lot from history. I'm not an activist in any way. I'm a historian, and I will paint history things, and people can, you know, uh, kind of join the dots and make their own decisions and how all that stuff compares to things nowadays or whatnot. I don't tell anyone how to think. Let's say I just present what I believe to be historically accurate out there. Let them decide. So your Tuskegee Airmen collection has over 40 paintings, apparently? Oh, it's got like 70. 70, some, wow. Yeah, so there's a lot in there. I had to stop doing it because I wasn't getting paid for it. I was just doing it, and after a while, I, you know, my wife is a wonderful woman, and she has stuck with me through all this, doing all the free stuff. But you know, enough's enough. You know, I, I don't want to, I don't want her to finally have enough and walk out on me. So instead, I started doing free paintings on the on the Japanese American internment. So. <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, there you go. So, um, what aspects of each subject kind of drew you into Tuskegee and the internment camps? And uh... 
Well, the Tuskegee Airmen was something I was uh, I was familiar familiar with them with the you know who the Tuskegee Airmen were. I wasn't didn't have a whole lot of in depth knowledge, but I was a, a, a artist for the U.S. Air Force and. What they would do, which they don't anymore, but what they did is they would have a biannual um, a celebration where they would turn over the artwork from all the artists would turn over to the Secretary of the Air Force, and and you know, and from there it would either go to the Pentagon or wherever it would go, or go into archives, or go to a base around the world or something. And I had yet to be on a mission, you know, to accompany the guy somewhere, and um, so they told me, well, just paint what you want to paint, you know. I said, well, I'm going to do a history piece on the Tuskegee Airmen. I did that. The first piece I did was uh, received better than I had thought. And so the guys at the Pentagon asked me to team up with CBS to do a documentary where they were going to follow me around while I interviewed Tuskegee Airmen and then painted them, you know, things like that. Uh, CBS dropped out. Um, I was so involved in it and I found the subject so compelling and so inspirational that I just kept rolling with it and the Pentagon helped me out so it became kind of a partnership between the Pentagon and myself and I just got more and more enthused as I as I found out more and, um, and if I had my way I would probably do another thing um, that isn't Tuskegee Airmen because they get a lot of attention um, nowadays but it, there's a lot of other African American groups from back in that era who didn't um, who, who served honorably in the, either the you know, Marines or the Army or something, or the Air Force. Well, it wasn't the Air Force back then. It was the Army Air Corps, which is what the Tuskegee Airmen were in. But it would be nice to shine a light on some of these other real heroic people from back then. Yeah, it's a, it's a great story. I uh, heard about the George Lucas movie. I haven't seen it yet, but... Um, Don't bother. It's not good? No, I wouldn't <laughs> recommend it at all. No. Okay, okay. Yeah, just look at the historic uh, things they have on it. You can find some actual history things on, like, YouTube and whatnot. But the movie was really, you know, wasn't very good. <laughs> so, right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that collection was done in what year, 2014? or? I started it. The first one I did was 2006. Um, oh. The first one I did for the Pentagon that got the attention. And then I started, you know, putting, you know, adding to that. The bulk of them were done in 2012, um, and then I did a few after that. Um, but um, yeah, I would say the bulk of them were done in 2012. Okay, and uh, were they um, displayed anywhere? Oh yeah, they've been. They started out at the Museum of Flight in Seattle, then they went to the National Air Force Museum for a year in Dayton. Or it was yeah the yeah the National Museum of the United States Air Force. Then it went to the Rosa Parks Museum. It went to the Southern Museum of Flight. It went to the Future Flight Museum in Muckleteal, Washington. It went to the Gadsden Museum of Fine Art in um, in Gadsden, Alabama. Then it went to the Shack Art Center in Everett, Washington. Um, and I think other places between here and the course, it was at Bowling Air Force Base and Andrews Air Force Base. Um, got, who knows, probably somewhere else I'm forgetting right now, but... But yeah, it's been around. So. Yeah, it's traveled around a lot. Yeah, yeah. And it's not done. It's not done traveling. I mean, it's just you know we're working on other other venues right now. So. Okay, and after that, you started the internment of Japanese Americans collection. Yeah, started that with my wife, who is a, a different kind of an artist than me. She's a three-dimensional uh, natural materials like sculptor and weaver, and she does just wonderful work so she and I started working on that project together okay and uh, is that completed or did you display it already well we we displayed it. yeah we had the first place but we've got other venues we've got a real big show but that's in 2022 at the Bainbridge Island Museum of Art Bainbridge Island is where the uh, actual roundup and evacuation process of Japanese Americans started in March of 1942, first from the ground zero place was Bainbridge Island, and they're going to have the 80th anniversary of, of the evacuation, and they're um, and we're that's what our show is going to commemorate is that. But we've had the first show we had was at the Shack Art Center, and and we've had you know interest uh, in a lot of other places. We just haven't you know nailed down any of the venues besides Bainbridge. Um, yeah, but it's it's ongoing. There's still some things I need to uh, 
need to cover and explore. I get emails from people asking me if I will, you know, read this and that and then come up with something for it. You know, it has to deal with, deal with the internment. And um, I want to keep doing, but again, it's all a money thing because th- these things I do on my own dime, you know, and people don't buy that stuff. You know, it's not, you know, if I wanted stuff to really be uh, hit the market, which I should be doing, I'd be doing like plain air landscapes or cowboys and Indians, you know, and that stuff sells. But that's, you know, been there and done that with the landscapes, cowboy stuff. I've done some of that, but I have no passion for it, so I don't do it. I do commission work to, you know, pay the bills, mostly portraits and things like that. But, you know, um, the other stuff I do because I love to do it, and um, that's why I do it. Not the smartest artist uh, in the world for damn sure, you know, I admit that. But at least I paint what uh, I love to paint. So. Yeah, that's good. At least you're not, uh, you know, stuck just doing what you don't want to do. Did that for too many years as an illustrator, you know. So now yeah. it's different. Take those skills you learned through all those years and and apply them to something you really want to do. So there you go. All right, I can see that. So um, I wanted to go back to the Dragon Warrior games for the NES. Um, mm-hmm. I just want to ask again how that whole thing happened. I just got hired to do it is all really I I can't remember all this stuff or the the um, who the art director was or anything like that it was just a matter of someone hired me to do that it was like you know like movie stuff or any any stuff that I did back then you know it's people would call me up and they say we have a job will you take a look at it and yeah then I'll do it I did a lot of gaming stuff yet I never played any games you know I just they would just hire me to do that and I would you know try to you know get is emotionally involved in the in the subject as I could for the moment, and then produce a piece, and you know that's it. Move on to the next work, you know, and not think about it again. That was kind of the way I did it. I see. So, um, Dragon Warrior three and four, those are the two games that you did in the Dragon Warrior series, correct? I guess so. I can't remember. I mean, there was one with all the the sword or all the arms, you know, the axes and swords and all that kind of stuff. Then they had like a crystal ball with a golden dragon sitting on it or something. Yeah. Yeah, that's one, and I think was the other was just the hilt of the sword, like a ruby type thing, right? It was green. Yeah, green background, and I think if I remember right, the the handle of the or the hilt of the sword was kind of rubies or something like that, red of some kind. Um, that's all I remember of it now. I mean, I should I guess pull it up and see, uh, but I, it sounds familiar because I you know I totally forgot about all those things until i think you brought it up last time right right because um in, in our like little dragon quest community we kind of have been wondering who had painted those for years we like never even knew you know uh-huh okay and okay. people have been trying to find out and all this and then i found you and it's uh turns out you're a little more uh you have a lot more uh are under your belt than i thought you would Oh, it's it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it really is. It's all the stuff I've done is pretty. I mean, like I said, I've been doing it a long, long time. So I'm trying to see if I can find this Dragon Warriors two. Was it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's the one with the sword, right? Yeah, four was the one with the sword. Oh, four. Okay, let me see if I can get that. Okay. Let me make sure because I'm I'm sure that's yeah you know, that's the one I did. I mean, well, I know what I did. I just don't know the number on it. Right. Uh, nothing's coming up, son of a bitch. Um, let me see. Well, anyway, well, I'm still looking this up. Why don't you ask me whatever you else I can tell you right now? Okay, so do you remember how large the paintings were uh, for Dragon Warrior? Uh, probably the the one with the with the dragon on the on the crystal ball was probably sixteen by twenty, something like that. Sixteen by twenty. Yeah, that was usually a standard size I would work. The other one was bigger. Um, oh, golly, I don't know. Because I paint a lot more and they'd crop in on it. Probably, oh, 28 by 24, something like that. That's pretty large, actually. Yeah, it was pretty, it was bigger than the other ones. So, you know. Um, but yeah, let me, oh, I'm still doing this. Yeah, they were what, you know, they were what they were. So, you know. Okay, and do you remember what materials you used for those two paintings? Yeah, the 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 one with the the crystal ball one was just acrylic on illustration board, and the other one with the with the sword hilt was oil on canvas. Okay, yeah, I I kind of uh, that's kind of what I thought. 
Yeah. Yeah, I went more traditionalist people. I was at that stage where people were were starting to to get into uh, digital, and I went totally the other way um, and and got rid of airbrushes and and the acrylics and started doing as traditional as I could, the oil on, on canvas type thing. Yeah, a lot of people don't do that much these days. It's mostly just digital. Everyone's into yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's really that's kind of what it is, you know. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm a throwback to that those old days. So. Well, that's good. It probably takes a little bit longer though, because uh, on a computer you can you know do very fast. Oh sure, sure. No, I, that I understand. Everything goes real quick. But that's why I got into doing the other stuff too. I I'd kind of hit my limit I think as an illustrator I did some illustration work after that I mean I even did some maybe as recent as a year and a half or two years ago or something like that um, but normally now it's I just you know do a lot of portrait commissions and do the the stuff that the museum stuff meaning the internment the, the um, uh, Native Americans do a lot of work with them because um, you see I like to work with the people that's one of the things like the 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 cowboy thing I'm really not interested in. It's planes stuff. Everyone and their dogs doing it. Um, and they go to these, you know, kind of rendezvous and, and, you know, dress up as cowboys and all this kind of shit. And they, you know, come back in their studios and dress up as cowboys and do stuff like that. And that doesn't interest me. But what does interest me with the native stuff, I work with the Northwest Coast guys. And I actually go up and stay with, with them for a while. These aren't, you know, just you know, whatever rendezvous and stuff. You go up there and stay with them. You learn about them. You attend their potlatches. They, you know, the natives are honored. I've been honored in potlatches. My wife and I both have uh, several times with some of the, the tribes up here, and um, it's more of a real experience for me. You know, as you're trying to really, you're not romanticizing anything. You're just painting what's there, basically, or, or you study the history and work with the you know, the culture bearers and the tribal noblemen and the chiefs and whatnot and then work with you know archaeologists and anthropologists as well like here at the university of washington or up at simon Fraser university or some of the places you know up in canada and whatnot so it to me it's a more real experience so okay um are there any uh, current or upcoming projects like big ones that you're working on right now yeah, I've got, um, I'm working on a book project with my wife on a lot of my, my whimsical paintings, but I'm also, I also have a show next year with uh, a big a big show actually, it's going to be up in Everett, again up in Washington, it's going to be with um, David Boxley, who is considered the finest native artist of his generation, and he and I are going to be working together on a native, uh, you know, two two different cultures but one voice type thing he and i are real good friends and and uh you know work together on a lot of things um but this is one show we've been trying to get together for a number of years you know it's kind of a path that you know both of us is he being a native and me being a non-native um you know i have a feeling of respect so we're, we're working on that i've got some things in the hopper with the um the buffalo soldiers museum in houston and you know I've got a, a number of things going. On. I got a, uh, they're going to have a show at the Pentagon of Vietnam pieces. I'm going to have a lot of pieces that are pretty, I guess, prominent in that show as well. So, so and I am the Air Force is flying me around to paint uh, women, first women, like say the first one, first and only African American woman U2 pilot. I painted her, and then I went back to D.C. and painted the first. African American female three star general. So I painted her, and um, I'm going to Texas to paint the first Hispanic woman fighter pilot. So I got that. There's always something going on, so which I'm grateful for. That's cool. So those are like um, government collaborations, kind of. Yeah, they're just I'm doing those for the for the Pentagon. They're asking me to do that. So. Wow. So, and like I said, I've got those others that have already been done. Um, so you know it's 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 going, and then my wife and I've been uh, we've been down in New Zealand, you know, with the Maori and things like that. And, you know, to me that that's really exciting stuff is is stuff like that. You know, going to working with with different cultures and and uh, leaders of those cultures, um, and that's you know I find that real interesting. So I do a lot of that. 
you travel a lot? Yeah, at times I do. At times I've gone a lot. I mean, last year I did quite a bit, I guess, you know, work-related stuff. My wife does a lot. She travels a lot, you know, work-related things, you know, with our artwork. Um, so, yeah, that's that's kind of some of the things I can remember that I have going on here, but I know we're going to have more, too, coming up. So. Well, that's good to hear. And uh, you said you were working on a, on a book? Yeah, my wife and I are working together on a book on on my whimsical stuff. I don't know if you've ever seen any of that because I don't post it everywhere because we're trying to, you know, keep it kind of on the QT until we get, you know, the book done and out and stuff. But I I do a lot of stuff that are based on uh, ridiculous sketches in my sketchbook. And then I I paint them up and my wife um, has been writing a story about, you know, behind them. So, So anyway... That's that's one of our big projects coming up. All right, I'll uh, keep an eye on that. That sounds very interesting. Sure. All right, um, and I think we'll uh, finish soon. Do you have any advice for um, like painters who want to get into it? I mean, even myself, I'm getting a little bit more interested in painting lately. Well, you know, it's something that you really wanted. You know, I think you've got to love it to or want to love it, I guess. And and then just pursue it. You know, if you like it, you're gonna put the time in it. I mean, if you're gonna, uh, if you love digital, you, you'll put time in that. No matter you know what you do, it's just a matter of your art form. But one thing I would say, don't get discouraged too badly. I mean, if people tell you, like in my case, I had a grandfather who said, you know, you're ridiculous. You know, anyone who goes into art is a fool. You're never gonna make it. Blah blah blah. You don't listen to that stuff. You just usually those are said by people who who have never made it. You know, the thing is is to just keep working hard at it. You know. Um, if you want to enter those contests, I don't personally because I don't, I don't do that anymore, and I'm not interested in it. But, but if that's something you want to do, you should uh, persevere in that as well, you know, and, and keep doing it. You know, even though you get a lot of rejection, just keep doing it. You know, and uh, that's that's your best way. Is just to, what's going to get you over the top is your love for your craft more than anything. You know, so. And always be a lifetime student, and if you love it, you will be. You'll always be learning and expanding and experimenting with these things, even when you're old. You know, been in the old meaning you've been in the business a long time. You'll always, you know, find a passion for it, and uh, that's what I would say. You know, long answer, of course. You can distill all this down because you're the writer, not me. This is good advice. Thanks, I appreciate it. Sure. Um, so, uh, I think I'll let you go. Thanks a lot for talking to me again. I really appreciate uh, you taking your time to, you know, tell me a little more about yourself. No worries. So if you need anything else, just let me know. Of course. Thank you. You bet, buddy. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Okay. Bye-bye.